Hi, my name is Jason Perez, and I'm a deployment manager for TransDev North America. Okay. We've been a part of working with Easy Mile ever since the Gen 1. What you see right here in front of you is the Gen 3. So it basically has a function of different technologies. It has GPS, um, also the LiDAR, radar sensors. Well, the public's reaction is mixed, more positive than you would think. Um, because once people are inside the vehicle and then the technology explained to them, then they start thinking about the normal uses of the vehicle in which, wow, I have an aunt that lives in a retirement village. This would be great for her. So things are like that. So basically a mixed reaction, but always positive. Oh, coming here, I just love it. It's a shopping district and these are the types of opportunities I like to be a part of, especially have the vehicle where it can engage with more of a public crowd than just, let's say, a private crowd. Sure. I've been working for four years, had no accidents whatsoever. It's super safe, um, especially with the technology. You know, I've tested it countless times and um, yeah, I'm a testament to that. So what would you say to people who might be a little nervous about getting on something like this? So usually what I do, I jump in front of it and I show them that, hey, <laughs> I'm not a statistic. It'll stop. It'll stop. Yeah. It never gets distracted. Nope. It's never on its phone. Never, never, never. Never on his phone. Never has to worry about, you know, going out with his friends. It's going to get you where you got to go. Yes, I'm Dionisi Damascopoulos. I'm a deployment engineer with Easy Mile, and I'm responsible for setting the vehicle up on our customer sites. So in operations, it has a predefined path, and it's going to use the surrounding environments and what it has in previous memory to make sure it can maintain its location down to four or five millimeter accuracy. I mean, it's very precise when it does that. So in the very beginning stages, this will go quite slowly. I need to map out the environment and it needs to make sure it gets a good picture, a painting of the surrounding space. And from there, we'll store that in memory. And then we begin refining the trajectory and where it goes over time. And we want to make sure we fine tune turns and approaches to stations and uh, lane placement as well. So it's a progressive build up on speed um, with maximum speeds around anywhere from 10 to 12 miles an hour. So the lights that are sitting on top of it and off to the side as well, it can see 360 degrees around the vehicle. And so long as something is approaching too close, it begins to slow down and it's noticing how an obstacle might be approaching it. And if it gets too close, it will outright shut itself down with an emergency stop. Now it doesn't turn the vehicle off, but it will lock up all the driving mechanisms and that will require a reset from some safety operator on board or possibly a remote operator rearming the vehicle. A lot of people know that cars that are autonomous uh, go along the uh, stripes in the roadway, but that's not what this is doing, right? Not quite. So this vehicle is different. While it does have cameras, it doesn't use camera vision like a Tesla or maybe Nissan Sense. This is going to use GPS, wheel odometry, uh, LIDARs, so laser, laser pulses that reflect back and it, an inertial measurement unit, which is kind of like an accelerometer. And it's going to combine all the data it's pulling in to follow a virtual rail. This vehicle will stick to its trajectory either laterally or longitudinally within four millimeters to a centimeter. If it strays from that, it will start to correct itself and slow down. It's constantly looking around in its environment including on the sides and in front of it, and it's going to adjust its speed to make sure it's not going to uh, hit anything. Uh -huh. In fact, it will slow it down and wait for the obstacle to move out of the way. Why isn't there a steering wheel? It wouldn't be much of an autonomous <laughs> vehicle if it had one, would it? No, we can manual take over. We have remote control, but unlike uh, you know, Google's Waymo or Zoox's vehicles, Uber, this is not built on an existing car. Easy Mile has built this with their manufacturing partner. And so there was never a need to have foot pedals or steering wheel from the beginning. So that's why it's never been a part of it. You've done a lot of these. What's unique about this and what are you excited about? This project is quite a bit more busy and we've incorporated other pieces of technology like V2I, which is vehicle to infrastructure. We're going to communicate with traffic lights, traffic signals to be able to cross intersections as well as TSP, which is Transit Signal Priority, allowing us to, as we approach an intersection, have a change phase and recognize that relay is approaching it, allowing it to let it pass through the intersection without having to wait too long for the light to change. Be patient with the vehicle, give it space. Um, you know, 
just like someone on the street, just like a new driver, just like a bicycle. Let's just be patient around it, give it room. You know, if you're gonna pass, just give it plenty of space as you do that. Yeah.